Hello and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about how to calculate cash flows of various bond types. For that I've taken an exam question that I also had to previously take. It is from a bachelor's degree corporate finance examination from uh, 2019 I believe. And the question reads as follows. The table below contains information about five bonds. These are traded on a given financial market. All of these five bonds have exactly one year until next term. So there's only one payment per year. The table contains um, various information about these bonds. So um, first of all, the type of bond, we have a linear bond, a coupon bond, an annuity, a zero coupon bond and a perpetuity. We have the maturity, which is in this case three years for all of them, except the perpetuity, of course. We have the annual coupon rate, the number of payments per year, as we've already said, that's only once a year, so one. And in the case of the perpetuity, we also have the price. The exam question then goes on to ask the student to calculate the cash flow for each of these five bonds per 100 Danish crowns in face value. So let's do that. I've prepared following spreadsheet already. So <clears throat> the information that was given in the tables is always highlighted in, in yellow and is usually on the left side here. And the cash flow calculation can be done um, in the table itself. So let's start with the coupon bond right away. Um, the outstanding debt at the beginning is obviously the face value, the, the repayment at um, the first term is zero as a coupon bond or coupon loan. Um, you repay the face value only at the end of all the terms, so at the maturity. So repayment is zero. The coupon is equal to the face value times um, the annual coupon yield, so 2.5% in this case. Um, the installment is the repayment plus the coupon. And the outstanding debt at the beginning, as we've already mentioned, is again 100. So the outstanding debt at um, the second term is the outstanding debt from the end of the first term. The repayment still zero. The coupon, um, if we fix those two, whoops, there we go, can just be dragged down. So the installment, the outstanding debt is obviously also still 100. Therefore, again, the outstanding debt at term um, at the third term is again 100. In this case, however, because it is the last term, we uh, do repay the face value. So the installment in this case is 102 because we um, repay the face value and still have to pay out the coupon. But afterwards, the outstanding debt is zero. Next up, we have a linear loan. Um, for a, So to begin with, uh, a Next up, we have a linear loan. Um, a linear loan is characterized by a constant repayment. So um, the repayment per term is just the face value times, oh, I'm sorry, divided by the number of terms. In this case, I can't see that, but should be here. So 33.33. Um, 33. The repayment is always that, so we can uh, lock it and drag it down. 
the outstanding debt at the beginning obviously again is 100 and the coupon in this case however is equal to the outstanding debt times the annual coupon rate and I can lock that again drag it down the installment is the repayment plus the coupon and the outstanding debt at the beginning is uh, at the end of uh, the first term is the outstanding debt at the beginning minus the installment oh wait no that was not correct um, minus the repayment yep so we have the outstanding debt at the beginning of the second term to um, equal as um, the outstanding debt at the end of the first term we can just drag this down too we can drag this down and this is again the outstanding debt at, of the end of the second term as you can see it all adds up Next up, we have the annuity loan. And the annuity loan is characterized by a constant installment rather than a constant repayment. So um, in order to get these installments, we have to follow a formula. And that goes as follows. We have double parentheses, one minus parentheses, one plus the annual coupon rate to the power of minus um, the number of terms. We close the parentheses and divide that by the annual coupon rate and have that to the power of minus one. Very confusing formula. I also have to look it up quite frequently, but um, you, you kind of get used to it. Um, you can't, however, um, use that as the constant installment because we still have to take that by the time of the face value, uh, by the, sorry, by the value of the face value. So C18, whoops, sorry, C18 to the power of the face value. And this now is our constant repayment whoops we can drag that down too here again the outstanding debt at the beginning is um, or we can just write it like that equal to the face value um, the coupon is equal to the outstanding debt at the beginning times um, the annual coupon rate. We can again drag that down. The repayment in this case, however, is equal to the installment minus the coupon rate. And the outstanding debt at the beginning is equal to the outstanding debt at the beginning of, no, sorry, the outstanding debt of the end of the first period is equal to the outstanding debt at the beginning minus the repayment. We can drag that down again. And this is equal to that. We can drag this down. And this is equal to that. However, I have made a mistake here. Let me just quickly check why. Oh, I didn't. I did not lock that. And as you can see, 
as you can see, now it makes sense. All right. Then we have a zero coupon bond. A zero coupon bond, as the name suggests, does not pay any coupons at all. The outstanding debt, however, is at the beginning of uh, the first term, again, equal to the face value. The repayment is um, zero because, well, you don't actually repay um, that bond until the end. So we can actually just, whoops, pull that down too. At the end, however, you repay the face value. <clears throat> the installments are therefore, I mean, if we do it correctly, is it, it is the repayment plus the coupon, but it's, it is um, still only repaid at the end. And as we do not get any coupons, um, it is looking similar to the repayment. And the outstanding debt in this case is equal to 100 minus the repayment. So again, yeah. So now if you're not too familiar with the zero coupon bond, you are wondering, well, how do I get my money with the zero coupon bond? Well, the price that you pay up front for a zero coupon bond is below the face value. And it is the present value of um, whatever the face value is and the rate that is being paid in the future. So in this case, um, the coupon rate is 0%, but you obviously make a return by paying a lower price upfront. For example, you pay for a zero coupon bond with a face value of 100, you pay 95, um, 95 US dollars or Danish crowns as um, it's written in the exercise here. And the five bucks is what is be what is to be made um, throughout the time of holding that bond. All right. Last but not least, we have the perpetuity. Um, the perpetuity never pays back um, the face value, so the outstanding debt will forever be one hundred, and nothing is ever being repaid. However, you do get uh, coupons until um, until forever, basically. That is the face value times um, the annual coupon rate. Lock that, have that. The installments, again, are just uh, zero. And the outstanding debt at the end of each term always stays 102. So that's how you calculate the cash flows of um, various bond types. These types of exam questions for finance or corporate finance exams are actually quite, uh, qu quite uh, common. So be sure to be prepared for these kind of questions for either um, a university exam or maybe even a CFA exam. If this helped, please consider liking or subscribing. And in any case, have a great day. Bye-bye.